G'day, it's Dave the Builder. Always love listening to Marco and the Ox on a couple of blokes and a couple of beers. Let's go, guys. All set? Yeah. G'day, folks. Mark Allen here and this fella on the other side of the desk. His name is Ox, otherwise known as David Schwartz. How G'day, Ox. How are you, Marco? Oh, I'm okay. You're tanning up. Yeah, I'm tanning up. For an old fella, you're looking good. Don't say that. Well, you don't like being tanned. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm actually worried. You know, you know how they say mentally you're something. Yeah. How old you are? Mentally. Oh, I thought mentally tough. Yeah, so I'm 53. Yeah. 54. Don't look it. Yeah. 54 shortly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, In your prime. Yeah. But no, you're not. Well, on. no, there are, just, on, there, are some, there are some issues at the you're moment. Glass, you're glass half full. You're not glass half empty sort of bloke. So I'm still playing golf. Yeah. I'm, I'm feeling the sun, okay? So I can oh. feel the oh, sun no, no. sizzling away no. at my forearms and the back of my calves. So that's been going on for a couple of years. The kids talk to me and they complain because these days I don't hear them. Well, is that because they're, they're like screaming, are Dad! You, are you tuning out? <laughs> or are you no, just, or are you I'm going deaf? worried because oh, no. I actually can't hear them. Oh, jeez. But something happened this morning yeah. that really worried me. Okay. What's happened? Well, I was at home. I was eating brekkie. Yeah, yeah. And I went outside. Yeah. And I got outside. Yeah, yeah. And I stood there. Yeah. And I couldn't remember why <laughs> I was outside. <laughs> Now, <laughs> there is something fundamentally wrong with that. We had the, the, front other, of the, with the front or the back? No, I was in the back garden. I don't even oh. know why I was there. But I made the effort. Do you remember how you got there? Yeah, I walked there, Dave. No, no. Right, no are you kidding me? I get that, but I just... No, I, got, I, I got a scooter. No, but you know you're driving down the road, right? Yeah. And sometimes you just you miss 20 kilometres. Yeah. Like it just disappears. Yeah, that's true. That's what I was thinking. Did you, did you miss going through the door or did you... Did you, did no, you just, no, no, Did no. you all of a sudden just wake up? I was up? very conscious of opening the back door, sliding the heavy door open, yeah, yeah. putting it back because the air conditioner was on. Of course, of course. And then I walked out there yeah, and right. I looked around... And I thought to myself, what the hell am I doing out here? Can I ask, were you in your jammies? No. Oh. No, no, no. You weren't. I was in the, you know, I was, you know, clothes to get around the house clothes. Okay. Before that. Now, this oh, is no. the scary one. Hang on. This so is going to get shower. deep. This is going to get deep, folks. This is going so to get deep. Have my shower. Yep. Get out of the shower. Brush my teeth. Yep. I couldn't remember whether I'd put... Deodorant under my arms and all. <laughs> now is, this is worrying, mate, because when you put deodorant under your arm, it makes a big noise. Psh, psh, yeah. psh. But it also smells. Then you got to put it back. Yeah. I, I had no idea. I'm looking. Have I put deodorant on or not? I'm. I'm, I'm, I'm now you're Mister Clean. Sm- you are Mister Clean. But I, I'm smelling under my arm. Can't smell. To try and work out you. whether I've put deodorant on or not. That's the length I'm going to. So this is so de- my faculties aren't the same. So what you found out in the last forty eight hours is you can't hear, and you can't smell. <laughs> can't, see, can't smell, and I'm losing my mind. Had you put it on? I don't know. Well, I'm not sure whether I doubled up or not, but I, I put more on. All right. Is well, there putting anything- more on probably means I doubled up. I put it. I, I went again. Is there anything else that you've noticed? Because we spoke about your teeth. Last week about getting them whitened. Now I've spoken to a lot of people yeah, about this. Yeah, it's go time. Well, they they give me a green light. You got a green teeth. light to absolutely well, light I it up. I think you have to on TV. You got it. If you're going to be on TV, you, got, you know you got to look a little bit shiny. <laughs> but if you get on TV and you can't hear and you can't smell <laughs> and you and you don't know you're there and you don't know you're there, <laughs> what am I here for? <laughs> we're in trouble. <laughs> you're getting out of bed easy. Yeah, no worries. There you are. Yeah, so, so your yeah. body's okay. But the body's no worries. Okay. I'm, I'm sp- like a like this a is neuro. This is this is always psycho. Bed. This is this is mental now, isn't it? This is just I'm blacking out. Memory blackouts. <laughs> I still can't remember why I was outside. No. No. Well, hopefully it was. Hopefully anything for you. I mean, well, uh, well talking yeah. about old. Uh, yeah. And and this, and this is probably and I. Uh, you know Kevin. You know my mate Kevin. Yeah, he's one, he so, caddied for me. He's so the Kev, worst caddy I've ever had in my life. Kev is, Kevin's 64. He's a hack. He's little a little dwarf. Left, little left-hander. Well, dwarf's probably a bit strong, but um, <laughs> but midget, midget yeah, like. Midget. midget like. Midget caddy. Yeah, midget caddy. So and we love Kevin. He's 64, but he thinks he's 40. 
All right, that's that's accurate. So, and when is he blacking out? Nah, oh, he has been for years. But uh, <laughs> but the thing, is, the thing is with Kevy, he thinks he's never ever going to fall off the perch. He's Peter Pan. But we're talking about he's a cockroach, in fact. Well, why are you calling him a cockroach? Well, why? because cockroaches survive. The yeah. Holocaust, they, it doesn't matter. The cockroach always lives. Yeah, well, Kevy's going to outlive us all. But what's happening is he's having friends. You know, drop by the wayside. You know, because when you're in the mid 60s, people start to fall off the fall perch. Off the perch and, and, yeah. you know, we don't want to be morbid about it, but, you know, the older you get, you know, yeah, yeah, actually, we're, you, at, we're at that age. I'll where... give you a stat. I'll give you a stat. Give me one. I bet you don't know this. What percentage of people make it to 64? What in the human race? In the human race. Here's a stat for you. And I know this because Kevin told me. Uh, he was, I'm going to say, because he's a bit I'm going to say 75%. 8%. Rubbish! Eight percent of people. I make it don't a believe you. Well, mate, we live Google in... it. No, I've already googled Someone it. Someone Google it. It's done. It's been googled. It's been googled. Hey Siri, I'll find out. All right. Hey, hey Siri, sure, no? what percentage of human beings get past the age of sixty-five? I don't know, but I found these Come results on. on search. Survival sixty-five. Uh, I think you're right. I am right. You're bloody right. It's right. You're right. I'm telling you. We live in, we live in a pretty privileged uh, Holy in, moly. In conditions. So Kevy's so Kevy's been thinking about this. So, hey, said, uh, so you're a ninety two percent chance of not getting the sixty five. Yeah. Sugar. Yeah. So that just, is a great stat. That's one of the great all-time stats. So I'm there with Kevy, and Kevy's told me this stat. And then we started talking about one of his mates that had passed away. And I said, oh, you know, the funeral will be good. He goes, I don't go to funerals. I said, <laughs> he's your mate. He goes, I don't do funerals. I said, oh, come on, I said, Kevy. Kev, I said, Kev, it's not about you. It's about it's about him and his family. That's correct. And doing the right thing. That's that's what a funeral is all about. I said, well, how can you not turn up? He goes, no, I'm going to the wake. Oh, oh that's a disgrace. <laughs> so he won't go to the funeral where there's a bit of emotion and tears and he goes, oh, I don't like funerals. He said, but he's the first bloke to go over there and get nah. drunk. See, you and I, we speak about civil selfishness yes. quite a bit. Yes. If you don't go to the funeral, <laughs> yet you are first <laughs> through the door at the wake, yeah. that is civil selfishness. 101. That's level five. Yeah, that is that level is five. That is level five yep. civil selfishness. So, Kevy. Disgraceful. So, I think that, Kevin, you got to turn up to funerals, not for you, because they're all uncomfortable. No one likes going to funerals no, and disgusting. crying. You're seeing and your friend, you're, someone you're close to get up go, and talk go. about the someone who's gone, they're crying in tears. So, I threw this one at him. I said, what about if your wife passes? He goes, I'll see her at the wake. <laughs> <laughs> and I promise you, he's serious. <laughs> he is 100% no serious. Way. I'm telling you. There's no way. I'm telling you, if Julie falls off the perch, he ain't going. He'll turn up at the wake. G'day, Jack. I welcome to the program. G'day, Marco. How are you? Ox, how are you? G'day, JJ. Uh, Jack, the real estate agent, or is it Jack, or is it Jack Johnson, the real estate agent? How do you like to be uh, introduced? <laughs> Jack Johnson's fine. <laughs> Jack Johnson's fine. My, I wasn't. I wasn't. I wasn't blessed. I wasn't blessed with a great physique, but uh, thanks to a Hawaiian singer, I was blessed with a great name. So uh, I like Johnson. to try and use that to full effect. Jack Johnson. It's a great hey, name. Hey, Jack. We're just talking about uh, funerals, and I got a mate that. Refused to go to funerals, but he's the first one at the wake. Um, uh, are you comfortable going to funerals and then going to the wake, or are you just a wake man as well? No, I think I go to the funeral. I don't think I'd wake if I've been to the funeral, I think, <laughs> personally. Hang on, you won't go to the wake if you've been to the funeral. No, no, I'd only go to the wake if right. I had been to the funeral. Yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't solo wake, I don't think. Yeah, I think that's a bit... I think it's poor form. I think it's taking advantage. It's of civil the selfishness. That's what it is. And we hate it. Jack Johnson, what's the biggest porky you tell to get a sail across the line? I don't lie. That's the one thing. I don't lie. <laughs> Come on, you're in real estate. You're the only real estate <laughs> agent oh, yeah, in the yeah. world. Absolutely not. I do not lie. That, that's one thing I can, I can put my hand on my heart. What did you do before real estate? <laughs> well, I've done real estate on and off for over a decade, Marco. Um, and then I, I did have a little foray into the wagering industry, which, you know. You're about... a bookie! Oh, no. You were a bookie! Probably like driving Mazda 3. If you start telling lies, you'll be driving a Beamer in no time. <laughs> <laughs> you, you've got to change your ways. So, Marco, a couple of weeks ago, mm. you were speaking about can we still be friends? Yeah, there's a few issues I've got. Now, I've got one that's come up. And it's amongst my mates uh, that I well, play golf with, good. and be good. Can't it's a re- it's a real concern. 
I'm pretty torn on this one, Ooh. and I'm I'm serious right now. Right. Don't look at me I, like no, I'm I can ser- see it in your I'm face. serious. I'm torn. I need your help. Okay. And I'm going to ask you about it next. You're having a couple of beers with a couple of blokes. This is Ox and Marco. And when you get a sec, we'd love you to subscribe and rate the podcast. Okay, I'm I'm dying to hear this because you and your mates, you're a strange group of people. Well, so part of my recovery, unusual part of my recovery, 18 years ago, Marco, yeah. was to start playing golf more regularly. Yeah, and you right? used to do it on a Saturday too because the races were on Saturday, yeah, that's which right. was genius. That's right. So so it became a therapeutic tool yeah. for me. So and, I, and, and I be- by the way, can I just say interject? Not many people would know that you had a gambling issue. Yeah, and this is the whole deal. Don't I know that? Not everyone. Mm, okay. There'd be people new to this podcast. Well, we'll tell them the truth. I was an unlucky punter. You were the worst um, punter in history. I wasn't bad. I was just unlucky. Yeah, right. Oh, no, I was just very unlucky. Very unlucky. Stiff. Especially when I was drinking so and punting <laughs> and hanging out with idiots. But anyway, that's not so. Anyway, so I take up golf as a as a thing, yeah. and then I was lucky enough to get on radio with yeah. a, with an ex pro. So by the, the, when he took up golf, he's got down to a handicap of two, mind you, folks, one, so he can play. One it's a joke. It's, oh, one, let's, 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 you let's, are let's, a let, let's not go there. Let's not go there. But but I had a I had a golf pro giving me tips every day, so that became easy. But I, I got a circle of friends. And there's about 12 of us that play regularly on a Wednesday. I don't play weekend golf anymore. I haven't played weekend golf for 10 yeah. years. It's now Wednesday mornings, every Wednesday, a, without fail. Kids sport on the weekends, and uh, you've been a good dad. I'll give you yep. that. I'll and there's 12, there's 12 of us that rotate in and out. We'll have two or three groups. And last week, the boat got rocked. This is under the banner of can we still be friends? Is it, can we is, still be friends? Are you leading friends? into this? Yes. Right yeah, so one of, one of my mates who's um, got a really nice business, he's about to sell and he's about to retire. What's the business? Uh, he's in the pet industry. Pet food. So he's, he's about to sell. He's got plenty, right? He'd be so he's, he's retiring, him and his wife. Right. So well done. He came to us last week and said, uh, seems he's retiring. Uh, golf's going to be, yeah, he's going to be more accessible and all that. So he's going to play more golf. He's going to play more golf, which Good is great. And I Good said, you beauty. Good stuff. He goes, but what I want to do is I want my wife to come and play. <laughs> 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 In amongst the, the boys that have been playing together every single Wednesday. He, he wants to bring her in on the Wednesday group. Now, we, we love her and we love him. So you, you're actually not asking me whether we can still be friends. In a roundabout way, you're asking 11 blokes. Can we still be that friends? That you play golf with every with single bike. Wednesday. Whether with you can be, I don't think you can. And, and, and this is nothing against women players. This is against the principle of what those 12 boys have been doing every single Wednesday. Now, if they want to change the day and have a girl, boy, golf day, let's say Friday afternoon, yep. drink some wine afterwards and have some chocolate cake or whatever, yep. I get it. But the sanity for your friends yep. will be disrupted. This is a disruption. My, no. I gave him two words. I told him to F off. How did he cop that? He said, Why? Oh, why? I said because it's, why? because it's us and 11 mates. This is our boys' time. Like, I don't want to be playing golf no. with your wife. I love your wife. No. And I'm happy to have a, a beer yeah. with her or a champagne with her or even dinner. Or But golf is my little sanctuary with you my You can't mates. be you no. on the golf course no. on a Wednesday morning. Of course I can't. If you're forced to play with one of your mates' no. wives. So how do I say it to him? So I you're out. Him. You're out. He's out. They're both out. Yeah, I'm not out. They're I'm out. Not, I'm not out. No. He's out, isn't he? He is out. So we can't be friends. So he has to either go back to her and say, sorry, Dale, Friday we can golf. play with you on a Friday, Friday, but we can't play Wednesdays. Monday. Wednesday. Sunday can't. afternoon. Yep. Any other day it's of the week. Just not that four-hour block. You can't force your wife into a golf group. No. It's not on. All right, I'm glad I'm glad you said that because I thought that I was yeah. I thought that I was being selfish. Now, by the way, there is nothing wrong from this young lady to start her own golf group. And at your golf course, Great there's point. a beautiful little par three golf course. Yep. It's nine holes. There is nothing wrong with the girls playing together on the Wednesday as well. And then maybe if everybody's happy and comfortable down the track. You can play. What about if she eyeballs me and she looks at me and she says, "David, I really, you know, just occasionally on a Wednesday." What no. about it? You got to ice her out. 
<laughs> she's iced out, man. Yeah, you yeah. gotta you gotta give her the full if she's asking those questions, yeah. it's the full on silent treatment. Do I have to have a do I have You to don't get, answer, you look away when the question is asked, and you move on. Do I have to get my mate into our inner sanctum and say Enough of this bullshit. Yes, yeah, you do. Enough of this. You do. You have to put him in a headlock. Enough. Put him in a enough headlock. Enough is enough. <laughs> oh, when it came up, I thought oh, I was almost sick. It's something you don't want to experience. Like that's just no. That would make you sick as a man. That's my. That's my only time that I have with my mates because I work. That's, that's it. my Wednesday morning is my sanctuary, and, and you know that's my, that's my happy place. That's right. <laughs> you know, you know when blokes talk without fear. That we will be judged. Absolutely. That is the most precious of time. Yeah. And whether that's in a Friday afternoon in a pub somewhere yep. or whether that is on the golf course or whether that is fishing with your mates, that opportunity just to be a bloke and not to worry about what comes out of your stupid mouth. Yep. Cause a lot, quite often it's stupid, quite often it's and offensive. And we're all on the same wavelength, so we know each other's jokes and the in-jokes and all that sort of stuff. If you take that release away from a man... <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's why I love who you are. Thanks, buddy. Because you are, you've got it together. You know, you've got the... It's the male barometer. Hey, you got to be tough sometimes. Sometimes it is. That is that is tough. Like love, the right kids, there. mate. They, if they play with their iPad too much, take it off them. Not for one day, not for two. Yeah. You take it off them All for right. three. You got to get tough. Right. Otherwise, no one learns. Okay, so this is the next step, and, and this is the most important step. Yep. You've got to take. Action. So it's one thing to sit here in front of that microphone and tell me yep. that you are going to take oh, this shit. into your own hands. Yep. Yep. I think you need to get the boys in a group and go to his house and meet the, them. <laughs> and do I do, do, I do the And old? I want you to put it on the table and explain it the way it should be explained and sort this situation out for the good of all blokes everywhere because you see what happens in this world. One little victory like this yeah. will stuff it for everybody. <laughs> yeah, it will. I will. Because this movement will gather momentum yeah, and then that's it. Yeah, that's... God knows what's next. So I do the brave thing and I say... So I get in there, there's 11 of them, and I say, look, I'll start the meeting off. <laughs> this is not about me. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't come to this decision. Yeah. This is our decision. No, mate. This is our decision. This is, this is the way I'm picturing it, this is a full-blown intervention. Okay. With your mate. I've done a lot of interventions. From the pet shop store. Okay. And you've got to get in there. And, I think and, it's and, pretty simple. But you've got to look at me in the eye and promise me this is going to happen because I'm going to follow up, Sport. No, no, I'll come back. I'll, 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 I'll report this, back. This will be the forum where I follow up. All right, we'll see how it goes. Hey. Oh. Now. No. no. No, now, I'm talk clean. about now, 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 I'm clean. I'm clean. I know you. I'm clean. Now, if, if you're hearing it, the I'm just no. That's now, not fair. I just a couple of episodes ago. <laughs> that's not fair, mate. You were talking about you've got a twisty addiction. Absolutely, I do. And you can't go down the lolly aisle. No, I can't because. And you know that, and you're eating twisties in front of me, you clown. Because you can't not go look, past look, the twisty and buy them. Have the shape of them. They're just gorgeous. <laughs> I want you to notice oh, that's... that I got the chicken ones because oh, no. I know you're fully addicted to the cheese. <laughs> I know the chicken ones are pretty, hell, they're good too. They're unbelievable. <laughs> but I'm doing this for you. No, okay. you're not. Yeah, no, yes, you're not. I no, am. No, you're not because... I am doing this for you. No, you're this not. is to toughen you up <laughs> because I'm going the extra mile here because I have my concern for you as a friend. If I didn't do this, all right, all right. Ox, I if mean, I didn't do this, yeah. I think you'd be in danger of just falling back. Okay, I'm going to give you some understanding of early addiction. Hang on, let me get right. these twisties out. So, so, so do, you know, do you know the most vulnerable time for an addict is, is 30 to 360 days after oh. abstaining? Right. Now I've been off. I've been off twisties. How long have you been clean? A few, a few weeks. You've been three clean weeks. for three so weeks. So I'm in the most vulnerable stage of my recovery right this, now. This from is addiction. just a test, mate. And you're putting him in front of me. It's just a test. I don't need a test. I'm shaky as it is. It's a test. I can't stop eating them. <laughs> oh, they're so good. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even look at you. Like they are beautiful. If I just left them here, right, now, <laughs> oh, I'm going to ask you a question, right? If I left them here, yep. Daryl and Dan and I, let's just say we had to go outside for a ticket. Yep. And move the sprinkler. Yeah. Right? 
<laughs> Let's say we just had to do that. Yeah. How would you go? Feel my hands. Feel, feel it. Feel, you got feel, the shades. Feel my, feel my hands out clammy. Oh, they are. They're, they're, yuck. Clam, they're clammy. Oh, Since you've opened them. Disgusting. That's no, so seriously, how, how, if we, if no, we no, were out, if you, if you knew, if if you knew we were out that door for two minutes, <laughs> and you had an open packet of chicken twisties It'd that be really hard. Let me say, are uh, quite fresh. Yeah, they yeah, are. They, fresh. they were only I, made a couple of weeks ago. I heard the, I heard the crunch. <laughs> 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 no, it, it knocked me around a bit. Yeah, I've got to go. I've got a bad addictive personality. Like that's really hard for me. And I'm not just. <laughs> 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 I'm not <doing> <laughs> you think I'm joking, do you? No, no, I can see it. Like, like there was... you got one eye on me, one eye on the twisty bag. <laughs> I went to a function the other night, two nights ago. They are good. You want and they, and they, no. Dan, you want? And they had Daryl. You want? Uh, they're very enough, good. Enough. And I had. Um, <laughs> and they had. Um, Tim Tams. Oh. Now, you know, Tim Tams My are like, Tim Tams are almost, Tim Tams are, they are the, they're the piece de resistance when it comes to biscuits and the most addictive. This is so good. My willpower, Marco, to say no to the Tim Tams is as strong as any well, willpower I've ever had. I think as a friend I've done a good service here today. Oh, yeah, thanks, because mate. You yeah, will I need be, more friends like you. You, <laughs> you will be stronger for this. Well, I hope so. I hope so. But and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to buckle. I'm not going to buckle. Periodically, I'm going to test. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> All right, you think you're going to test, do yeah. you? Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Really, really? Yeah, that's coming, right. Coming from a guy <laughs> that's never had a strawberry or a banana in his life, if you want to go down this test route, no, 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 I'm more than no, happy to test that's you. That's very different. I'm mm. not addicted to yeah. bananas and strawberries. Yeah, yeah. Not, not yet. I'm not addicted not to yet. them. Not yet. You are addicted to twisties. Well, I was. So I'm just trying I to was. help. I'm clean. I'm clean. All right, well, there's only one way to go about this. What? Nick, the investment guru. G'day, Nick. G'day, Ox. G'day, Marco. Is that a dog's act or is that oh, is that acceptable? That's like kryptonite. That is terrible, oh. Marco. Yeah, no, it's terrible. Right. It Nick, is. this is good for his strength of mind, something that's very underrated. Strength and conditioning. When you're, when you're treating addiction, <laughs> right, here I'm talking about oh, Here we go, here we go, here we go. When it comes to treating addiction, your mind is like a, it's like your bicep. Is it? Yes, it is. Okay. You need to strengthen the mind. You need to give it exercise. And the chicken twisties, I didn't go, I, uh, Nick, yeah. mind you, I didn't go cheese. I didn't go cheese, which is the true kryptonite. I went the chicken. That, that would just be a, a dog egg. That a would be a dog egg. But I, I reckon this will, this, this will make him stronger, surely. Mental strength and conditioning, absolutely. Mm. And, and you know, the, the chicken ones would have been just a just a low, low, even a lower end. I reckon. <laughs> now, Nick, I know your I, I know your appearance is pretty uh, important to you. He looks you, good. You, you're a sharp looking rooster. Well, yes. Marco's singing about whitening the teeth. Have you gone down the whitening the teeth oh, uh, process? Oh, oh, I've got to admit, I've done it once, oh. and I think I, I think Colgate Advanced Whitening is the cheaper option. I've got to say. Did it work? <laughs> did it work though? You, you're looking pretty sharp. It did work. It did work. It's a it's a bull market. It's a bull market. <laughs> <laughs> did did you did you look younger when you when you did it and you looked at yourself in the mirror? Did you feel like you looked younger? You did a little bit, but Hel- healthier. Did you look healthier? Yeah, you did. But when you gave yourself a smile in the mirror, you sort of saw this crinkly <laughs> old face with white. I've noticed driving around uh, most areas of Australia, there's a lot of massage parlors, and they've got the oh, same, they've got the same oh, photo you, up of the same. On, you've yeah. noticed it, yeah. have you? <laughs> and <they're> same, <laughs> I'm not, have you noticed the same thing, Nick? And have you ever actually just ventured in to have a quick look to see what's going on? Well, I'm in Bali at the moment, Ox, so it's a very contentious issue. Okay. <laughs> okay. I do notice them here and there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, I think they're prevalent. They're, they're starting to pop up everywhere. They must be – they must be – I think it might it's, be a good business. The same Should we be investing in, in, this, sort of, in this sort oh. of industry, Nick? You know what someone told me, and this is, I just found out this about two weeks ago, that when, when there's a flashing light on those establishments, yeah. flashing light, it might – Mean something's available. I mean, I'm not, oh, I'm not saying oh. anything. Yeah, right. so just keep that in mind. Like twisties? Little... It's a bit like the sneakers <laughs> yeah, hanging on the. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> a bit like the sneakers hanging on the power lines. Oh, okay. Right I up. get it. Exactly. Let me get this straight. We're just rolling along doing the show. 
And in your mind, you start thinking about massage parlors. Are you no, no, are no, you no, mad no, and kidding me? No, c- c- I reckon the, for every subway, there's two massage parlors. For every subway, <laughs> every subway. <laughs> what sort of a unit of measurement is that? <laughs> well, well, <laughs> ask every them, subway ask them. per subway, <laughs> two point two times every subway gives you the basic well, for massage well, parlors in cities well, across the, re- the world. I'll tell you why I said that because My you know God. you know the most popular restaurant in the world is the subway. There's more Subway restaurants than down the McDonald's. Is this going to be official data down the track one day? <laughs> oh, mate, this yeah. is, this yeah. is official data. I know this so for a fact. Compared to a so whatever I'm, it might be, so groceries it might be. But they're everywhere, these massage parlours. Yeah, they Can are. Can I just tell a little massage parlour story? Oh. Oh. Just a, little, just a little story. Tell me a story. I've got a bad back. You know that. And that's no excuse. And and, and I and, and I and I and I'd heard about the flashing lights as well. I Have heard you? that story that if it's a flashing light, that it's more than just a massage. Right. More is on offer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. It's, it's a really happy place to right. be if you want to if you yeah. want to do that. You go and get a pack of twisties. But I hate that. I don't want that. <laughs> I actually want my massage, my back to be massaged. I want to. I want to actually go in there, get a deep tissue massage, and come out. You don't want and, option B? No, I don't want option B. I don't <laughs> need option B. It's fine. I'm just happy. So, so my. So so someone I know really dear and close to me yeah. said, go to this one. She's unbelievable. So I think, you beauty, I'm going in there. So I go in there the first, and, I, and she was unbelievable. She was walking on the back and she deep tissue massage right. yeah. and she was working up a sweat. Strong? And I, uh, uh, unbelievable. And she's only tiny. She's only, mm-hmm. be, you know, 5'5". Five, five Hands of kilos. gold. She has got, she's almost Roberto Duran, hands of stone. Like they're just wow. tough, tough as tough. Right. So anyway, I go back there a couple of weeks later and i just done a sporty. I'm um, around the corner, so I've got a pocket full of cash. <laughs> you know, like, everything's going good, so I go in there. Well, of course you pay tax on that cash. Absolutely. Yeah, of course. No, I declared yeah. it. Uh, <laughs> 45 minutes in, she goes, excuse me, Mr David. Option B. I thought, oh, hang on. Hang on. Hang Here on, we hang go. On a hang on a minute. This I is said, an option no. B. I'm thinking to my mate, he goes, there is no shenanigans going on here. But I'm a good-looking rooster. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she couldn't control herself. <laughs> she goes, Mr. Thanks David. Thanks for safe free she goes, she goes, Mr. David, can I ask a question? I said, I'll just have the massage, thank you. Right. And with that, she goes, okay, we're finished. Cut me off. That was that? She cut me off. Because <laughs> there's no option B. Because <laughs> I shouldn't have told her that I had a pocket full of cash. Oh. That was the problem. Oh. That was the problem. Okay, uh, time to get the joke. Uh, let me just step over here. All right. Uh, what, are, what are our choices? What do we got? We've got a blonde blonde joke. Blonde joke, dad joke, Irish joke, knock knock joke. And a little Johnny joke. A little Johnny joke, and there's a couple other categories. <laughs> uh, what is it? Blonde joke. Okay, blonde joke. Blonde joke. Down, you must have something yeah, in the back of your mind there. Hey, can I just say? Can I just say before we say the blonde joke? Yeah, you're not having another twisty, no, are you? No, no, not yet. I'm listening you don't to have a joke. twisty. I'm about to tell a joke. Okay. Don't make me angry. Just go and now, tell your joke. Now, if we do have any blondes listening to us, <laughs> this is a joke, <laughs> and it might not apply to you, but it could. <laughs> so, a guy, so a guy was driving his car, Marco, right? And he had a blonde in the car. In the car. So, and he told her to stick her head out the window and see if his blinker was working. So she stuck her head out the window and said, yes, no, yes, <laughs> no, <laughs> yes, no. <laughs> uh, all right, thanks, thanks everybody. Joke. Well, and there it is. A couple of blokes, couple of beers with Ox and Marco. And as always, thanks to our great Couple of Blokes, Couple of Beers family members for helping out on the show today. This week we had Jack Johnson, the real estate agent, who drives a Mazda 3, not a Beamer, and never lies. And Nick from Bali. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Couple of Blokes, Couple of Beers executive producer is Dan Bradley, Kaizen Media. Sound design, Daryl Misson at loudzebra.com. <laughs> Come on. You can't fit that many in your mouth. Mm. Please stop. They're very good. <laughs> Look at you. You probably don't even know you're here. Do you know where you are? <laughs> <laughs>